Okay, this has been a highly requested video by a lot of my customers and a lot of friends of mine. How do you make your website, how do you make your WordPress websites load so quickly? As you can see here, I have a page, a website of mine, a software of mine that loads in under half a second, which is about half the time google.com loads. It's quite quick. You notice my page size is quite low. That's through optimization, which we'll get into. Um, and this website is in the 97th percentile. So the first thing you want to do is start with a good host. A website is only as strong as its weakest link, so even if you do all the other proper on-site optimizations, if you have a bad host, it's, it's going to ruin everything anyways. So there's two options here. You can go with Linux hosting and get a VPS, or you can get managed hosting. They each have their pros and cons. The first one, we'll talk about Linux hosting. It's medium to hard difficulty. If you're someone who, you know, is interested in learning, understands, let's say you already are into coding, I really suggest you learn a little bit of Linux, some of the basic commands. Go ahead and go with DigitalOcean. Um, they offer virtual private servers. I'm gonna go through a quick tutorial in the next slide on what you do with a, v with a VPS. If you're not interested in learning that and you just want to get something done quick and easy and you don't mind paying a little bit extra, WP Engine and WPX Hosting, which is Traffic Planet, Traffic Planet Hosting, around $25, $30 a month for one site, you have that option. So DigitalOcean, I'm going to run through some of the, if you don't want to see this, skip ahead a couple minutes. But basic, basically how it works is each server is called a droplet. Every account can have multiple droplets. I generally put one website on each droplet. Uh, by doing this, by using an independent droplet, it really keeps my websites protected from hackers. If you use a WordPress plugin that is developed by someone who doesn't really know what they're doing, let's say an amateur developer, they could have it could have vulnerabilities in it that hackers could take easy advantage of and hack your website. The thing is, if it's on, if your websites, if your websites are on different VPSs, different droplets, then it, of course it will only affect the one. Um, another example is if you have a script that's taking up too many resources, it won't affect and slow down your other websites, but just slow down that one independent website. So sign up for DigitalOcean.com. Click Create Droplet in the top right corner. It's a green button. The first option you're going to have is choosing an, a Linux uh, distribution. CentOS is the one I, I usually go with. Regardless of which distribution you choose to use, generally you want to go with the latest version and you want to go with the 64-bit version. Um, the only reason you'd go otherwise is if you went with 32-bit, it's for example if you're using software that needed 32-bit, um, but there's limitations with using a 32-bit machine for example. Um, you can only have so much RAM, I think it's 4 gigabytes of RAM on a 32-bit machine. But there's a bunch of limitations, just go with the most recent version and 64 bits unless you have reasons to do otherwise. So the $5 per month plan is plenty for most of you guys. You know, I have sites that get over 10,000 hits per day and they balance between the 10 and $20 per month plan. Um, generally you can cash them and really lower the CPU and RAM usage. Um, you're gonna end up choosing a location after Choose based on where your market is. If it's in the east, the eastern USA, just choose New York. If it's in uh, western USA, choose San Francisco, and choose the choose the later of the numbers here, the um, you know the three or the two here, just because these are generally the new server or the new uh, locations they have. So like one and two generally get filled up and get pretty packed. So they you know bring on a third one or the first one had a lot of demands and now they have a second one. So generally you just get the best. Um, the best quality of us out of you get you get the best bang for your buck if you choose the later of the numbers uh, then click there's a couple other options at the bottom you can name it etc click create and now it's time to log into your server um, if you're on Mac open up terminal which is inside of the applications folder and then click utilities and if you're on Windows download putty putty is a free application you can grab off of Google then you need to get your IP address to log in, and you need your username and password. The IP address is provided by DigitalOcean. It should be in your control panel. The username is going to be root, and your password will be emailed to you shortly after you create the droplet. On Mac, when you open up Terminal, just type ssh root, 
and then the at sign and then your IP address, hit enter, enter in your password, you'll be logged in. On PC, Putty has a user interface, so literally just punch in your IP address where it says IP address and then username and password. Um, paste that info in and then you're logged into the command line. So now the next part is to install everything. You have to install your server, which some people usually use Apache, but Apache is kind of outdated in a sense. It has its uses still in, in many, many, many web, web applications these days. But Nginx um, has a lot of advantages these days. I'm not gonna go into technical aspects, but Easy Engine basically installs Nginx for you and WordPress and if you use this extension here it'll install Redis uh, which is a uh, key value storage system it's a, it's a type of database type of NoSQL database actually um, so basically what you're going to do is punch in go to easyengine.io and on the home page it has these two queries right here so you, you can copy and paste them in Cop oh, didn't mean to move that on the copy this in and put that in your command line, hit enter, it'll go through a whole bunch of stuff, you'll see commands flying all over your screen. Um, you'll look like you're on a CSI hacking movie or, or show or something like that. Don't be worried, wait to the end, there should be no errors, and then go run the second line, um, of course replacing example.com with your domain name, and instead of, I mean you can run WP, that'll just install uh, WordPress, or you can install WP Redis, which will install Redis with uh, with your WordPress installation, which is what I recommend you to do. Which is what I recommend you do. Well, lastly, just configure your domain um, under advanced settings and any of your registrars, um, Namecheap or, or whoever you're using, Internet.bs. Set a A record, actually two of them. The first one, just have no subdomain, leave it empty, and then enter in your IP address from your uh, your droplet from your control panel on DigitalOcean and then the second one put www and then do the same IP address and you can redirect them or however you want after um, and then that's basically set up and Namecheap has a full tutorial on this you can google for a full tutorial on how to set up the uh, A record for your domain okay so now we have WordPress set up uh, you can transfer in your files from your other host um, I'm not going to go into that there's lots of lots and lots of tutorials on how to do that so transfer it all in and get it set up. If this is a new site, then uh, just keep going. So we have either Nginx, Redis, and WordPress installed by Easy Engine, or you have used WP Engine or WPX Hosting from Traffic, from Traffic Planet. And it's time to install plugins. So there's only a few plugins that I recommend. Auto Optimize, or Autoptimize, if you can pronounce that, a couple of the major things it does is it compresses the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files by removing white space and comments. It it's, uh, just compresses it all into one ugly chunk, but the code is still the same and still works the same. And it also merges your external Cascade style sheets into one file. And by external, uh, they're actually your locally hosted external CSS files, if that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it, it's not important. Um, but external doesn't actually mean externally hosted. So that does that, and it's very very simple to set up. And then uh, if you don't have Redis, even if you do have Redis, you can still install uh, W3 Total Cache. Uh, Super Cache, I think, is the outdated competition of that plugin. Grab that plugin, and then uh, lastly, also grab Smush. Smush it. It's uh, the Smush. It's called Smush Image Compression and Optimization, and that will basically losslessly compress all your images, so they'll look the same, but it will basically compress them until uh, just before there's a visible quality difference. So it'll try to. It'll basically save you save you lots of space. Um, do that. Run that on all your images. There's a free version and a pro version. You can just use the free version. It should do everything you need, but it is a great plugin. And the next part three, this is here. It should be your website now. You can go to tools.pingdom.com and you can test it. And it should be loading around the time of, around the speed of google.com. If it's, if you want it to be quicker, or if you have a lot of images on your website, you can use a CDN, a content delivery network, which will host all of your images and other resources. 
So, first of all, not everyone needs to use a CDN. Don't just fall victim to the hype around it. I mean, if you have, like I said, if you have a lot of images, use a CDN. If you have a lot of videos, don't use a don't use a CDN to host your videos. And it's hosting video properly can be uh, complicated. If you want to use, I'm gonna enter that in here. If you want to use uh, videos, Wistia, I think, is the website that I use to host videos. Um, free and paid version. That's the best uh, video player. Um, just to quickly send video and compress them properly, they take care of all the technical stuff. It's just a mess. Hosting your own videos on your own website is actually a mess. Um, so again, not everyone needs to use it. If you're hosting images, uh, a lot of images, then yes, use a CDN. Uh, Max CDN is great. It's very, very popular. Um, but it's like buying the first car you see on the lot. It's like you know, you don't even shop around. If people that buy Max CDN are the people that usually don't shop around. There's a ton of options on the market. Um, and they're mostly popular just because of, you know, they have connections with some of the top WordPress plugins. Um, I think W3 and I'm not sure what other ones have a connection, but you'll see them promoting Max CDN. It starts for around $50 per, I'm not sure if that's per month. I can't remember, but actually it's not per month, but it's just, uh, if you want to go entry level, Bunny CDN starts at just five dollars. If this is your first CDN, go ahead and use Bunny CDN. Excellent results, excellent speed. Uh, I've tested them a lot. A lot of recommendations from from past clients. They they said they've been using this CDN, um, and friends also use Bunny CDN. It's I recommend it. Not I don't have an affiliate link or anything, but uh, great service. And how it works is you input your domain. So for example, I input joshmcdonald.net. And then over about two or three minutes, it'll scan your website and then download all of your resource files. Um, so images, etc., cetera, um, even your HTML. See, it'll download absolutely everything. And it'll spit out a URL, something like joshmcdonald.b-cdn.net. And you'll be able to, you can navigate, I mean, it's not actually set up there, but when you do, when you get your output URL, you can navigate to this in your browser. And uh, what you do, you'll see it, it loads perfectly fine in your browser at that URL. So what you do is you copy that URL and you go into W3 Total Cache and you go into a top auto optimize and you place your CDN URL in the text fields there. And it'll basically just replace all of your images, uh, style sheets, etc., with uh, this version here, which will load much faster than your host because the CDN, uh, they have multiple locations around the world close to your uh, close to your customers and then everything's cached several times at several layers um, so it, they, they produce that they can return the files quite quickly much faster than your server can and that's that's all that CDNs are not that complex if you if you follow me through that that's all um, and then there's a bunch of miscellaneous tips I can give uh, asynchronous for synchronous loads this is explained here this is synchronous so you know, it loads script, script, script. You know, this could be JavaScript one, two, three. Then it loads the next thing, which is CSS, and then you might have another JavaScript file. It just loads them one after the other. Um, by async, by using asynchronous loads, you can overlap them. Um, for example, use stack counter. I believe by default they use synchronous loads. So um, you know, you have to change that over to asynchronous if you want to load quicker because stack counter takes like a second or something to load. It's ridiculous. Um, combine fonts and external resources. Google Fonts, you can combine all the URLs. Most themes, most people who build themes do not build it with speed in mind, so there's some customizations you can make if you understand basic HTML and CSS. Um, remove unnecessary JavaScript files. For example, some themes come with uh, Google Maps uh, implementation. If you're not using Google Maps, sometimes it still loads the API uh, JavaScript file. And it takes, you know, it might take half a second to load. You can literally comment that out in your HTML file if you find, if you find it in your theme, um, and then remove unused CSS. And that's this is quite difficult, but there's a lot of CSS rules that you have. Like I would say 80 to 90 percent. Chrome will find them and tell you what they are, but it won't. They won't actually spit out. It's complicated, but there's a lot of unused CSS rules. If you want to try to accomplish that, you can look up how to do that. Um, customize the browser cache. And you can do that by modifying the nginx configuration file. Um, there's great tutorials out there on that. And then further on, you can use a couple tools that will spit out 
different problems you have with your website. Tools.pingdom.com, as I mentioned before, very, very user friendly, and it will give you a score. It'll compare you to other people. Um, and then there's gtmetrics.com, which is also great. Uh, both are, are world-class uh, leaders for analyzing speed. And uh, just, just learn to diagnose the issues. Um, for example, if you see this in Pingdom, you see that half of your time, well, I mean, look how long this is, is from zero to 2.7 seconds, is purely just waiting on the host to respond. This is the uh, non-WWW version, and then it redirects to the WWW version. Um, and then here is when it actually starts loading anything, and you know it's about half of it. So if it takes one over, let's say over half a second, then you can, you know, you can determine, you can say that that's because of you have a bad host. Um, and that's it. So if you if you are confused with anything, you can leave a comment. If you are saying this is just too much, Josh, can you just handle it for my corporation? Uh, shoot me an email at joshmcdonald.net forward slash contact, and uh, one of myself or a team member will get back to you. And optimizations start at around five hundred dollars per website. Differ it will differ based on the size of your company. Um, how big your website is, what exactly needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. Um, we'll go through that in different options. Anyways, I hope I helped. If you do have technical questions, feel free to drop a comment and myself or some other viewer will reply to you. Anyways, thanks for watching.